Hello, and welcome to the We Talk Health podcast, the official podcast of West Tennessee Healthcare. I'm your host, Kara Mobley, and on today's episode, we are talking about June as Men's Health Month. Here with me, I have Dr. Joseph Fouché. He is with Kirkland Cancer Center. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Great. So um, what is your title? Medical Oncology and Hematology. Great, great. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Fouché, um, give me a little bit of info about yourself. Um, how long have you been here? How did you get started? So, I've been here starting, oh, July 2014. So, I've been 10 years oh, this wow. year. Trained at, in New Orleans at Tulane University. That's where I did my fellowship and residency. I went to medical school at Case Western University in Cleveland, Ohio, and got afraid of the snow. So, I decided to come back south. <laughs> so. And so in a nutshell here, um, I've been uh, 10 years at Kirkland. You know, we see everything, including prostate cancer. We see everything here from blood disorders to almost every cancer we treat here. So it's been a uh, great time. Great. Are there any experiences here that, that have really touched you or, or had any major impacts on you since you've been here? Oh, sure. The patients. I mean, uh, the West Tennessee, you know, the population in West Tennessee, I always say this is a little bit different other places. Mm -hmm. So... What, and I mean it in, in, in an absolute good way. Um, the people here, they're, they've been great. Um, every time I see a patient, you know, almost always every day I'm smiling when I see my patient. So it, it's really the, the interactions I've developed through the years with people, the relationships I've made. So those, those, have, those have been a, a, absolutely excellent. Great, great. So this episode is going to be about June being Men's Health Month. Um, we just kind of want to raise awareness of men's health issues on this topic. I know we've got some important dates for June. We got Friday is... Friday, June 14th is Wear Blue Day. And I know a lot of times West Tennessee Healthcare across the board, uh, people will do that to raise awareness. Um, so what are some things that you want to let people know about men's health, how it's different, I guess, and more specifically? Between men and women, as far as their cancer rates, men do tend a lot of times to get diagnosed at a later uh, stage uh, for many cancers. Prostate, of course, being specific to men, we do see an advanced prostate cancer in a lot of, a lot of our patients. And some of them go to the doctor as often. They don't get checkups. They don't do the screening as often. So that's something we really try to have been working on here, but something we need to definitely uh, spend more time and efforts to try to make sure that men understand that, hey, it's okay to go to the doctor. It's okay to get the screenings. It's okay to get referred if you need us. So um, that's really the, the main, one of the main takeaways I, I would like to put out there is that we really encourage men to get, get their checkups, get the screenings done, and that, that can prevent some long-term complications for them. Right. And as for the people who are maybe skeptical and maybe don't want to come get screenings, do you have any advice for people that love them and support them for how they can maybe kind of help, not convince, but like help support them in that way to say, you know, what, what would be the harm, I guess? Sure. I mean, support. So I'm going to transition that a little bit and saying that we have tons of data saying if people with support at home, with the family, with their friends, with their loved ones, they do better in the long term. So that's the first thing to put out there is support is always a good thing as far as long term outcomes for us in cancer specifically. That being said, the best thing I can recommend is to just encourage your, your loved ones, the men in your life to go get their physicals, go get their exams done. And we're going to go into screening a little bit later, yeah. but make sure the screenings are done. Just encourage them. These days, a lot of times, most of the screening can just be done with a blood test. You know, that's a big issue for a lot of people of, of you know, how invasive is screening. Well, most screening is done by blood. So, you know, if we reiterate that, I think we'll have a lot more, you know, compliance. Right, right. And in terms of when you have someone and they're maybe yet hesitant, what would you say if it's maybe their first time coming or if they've come before? Like, what can they expect from from start to finish? I guess to kind of ease some people's minds if they've never been to wonder how long does it take, you know, from from getting in the office to, to leaving. Oh, yeah, sure. So, I mean, you know, number one, the very first thing is just to go into your primary office, get a good physical, get, you know, get the basic blow work. That's always the start for anything. And these days, you know, I, our clinic's efficient. I know most of the clinics in West Tennessee are very efficient. So the whole concern about spending the whole day at the doctor, those days are, are not here anymore. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so, you know. In and out, good physical, good yeah. lab work. That's a good start. Most of the things we will pick up on that initial initial appointment, and you know, kind of take it from there. But yeah, and I feel like age is a big thing. Sure. When when would people need to kind of start be thinking about that? Is it like teenage or you know maybe a little bit older that they need to be? So I, I would recommend mindful. once you get an adult, you should you should at least get yearly checkups. I mean, yeah. you know, seeing a physician, um, you know, for for basic things like hypertension, cholesterol checks, mm -hmm. I, I really recommend. You know, starting those those checks younger. 
We talk specifically to prostate cancer during really 40s and 50s, depending on your risk factors, when yeah. we really recommend getting in pro- for prostate checks. But honestly, I, I, you know, there's tons of data out there that says, you know, if you get going with routine checkups, usually we're able to find things earlier, and at least the better outcomes down the line. Right. And in terms of like annual screenings, you know, some people would be physically fit, healthy, active. Do they need to be less worried or is like genetics a factor? Like how would mm-hmm. they need to? So be aware exercise of and being fit is absolutely important. Um, that's important for anything, even when it comes to cancer medicine, as I do. But any, anything med- medical wise, if you're in shape, you have better outcomes. That being said, that's not the end all be all. Right. So genetics absolutely plays a factor. We know we now, as we get more data behind genetic testing, behind genetic data and collection of that, we know absolutely that genetics plays even maybe a bigger factor than we thought in previously for health outcomes across the board, whereas cancer, cardiovascular health, we do know genetics play a role. So it's, being physically fit is important with regard to your health, but it's absolutely just a, por- a portion of the whole component. We need the genetics and the physically fit and the regular checkups and, and right. jumping on things. So, yeah. Right. So we just want to make sure people know, like, even though you're like, hey, I'm eating right, I'm exercising, I feel healthy, that that's not necessarily a, a, a write-off for not being seen at all. Absolutely true. <laughs> right. So now I know you mentioned screenings for prostate cancer. Are there other cancers that just involve men, or is that pretty much a, kind of the main one? That's the only one that um, that would be the only one that's just particularly for men. Right. Um, yeah. Now, there are some cancers that have a little bit more female predominance, mm-hmm. I mean, breast cancer being one, but breast cancer actually can occur in men. Right. So I want to... I do want to make sure we said that because that's yeah. important to know. But prostate cancer is the only one that's very specific to men. Yeah. Um, and I think I had spoken to Dr. Wright about mm-hmm. the metastatic breast cancer. for and With men, it's like you make sure you get that checked out. Now, is that a genetic thing as well? Like if uh, it was a family, a familial thing? So absolutely can be. So if you have if you have first three relatives, you're going to be at higher risk. Mm-hmm. There are some genetic conditions and genetic predispositions that we can that will set you up as a male to have a higher risk of breast cancer. That being said, every male breast cancer is not necessarily related genetically; it can uh, occur sporadically. So you know we don't recommend screening per se for male breast cancer, but certainly if there's a concern, a uh, checkup, getting into your physician to get to get it looked at, always important right. to catch it. And in terms of prostate cancer, what is the outlook on that like, depending on how quickly it's found, I guess? So prostate cancer is a little bit different than a lot of cancer. There's a wide spectrum of aggressiveness, a wide spectrum of, you know, responses to therapy, a wide spectrum of uh, prognosis. That being said, though, we do recommend prostate screening, but we do, at this point, the data goes a little bit back and forth as far as who who needs to be screened. So it really needs to be individualized. That goes back to an earlier point, like we were saying, getting in to talk to your physicians about the pros and cons of screening. Generally speaking, though, around age 50 is when we traditionally say um, get in and have a discussion about screening. Obviously, you're higher risk. Sometimes we go in, even into the, your 40s. Um, okay. If you're higher risk and high risk in this situation means first degree relatives with it. If you have any known high risk cancer syndromes, like the genetic testing we, mm-hmm. we, we mentioned. So those patients get screened a little bit early, but usually around age 50 is when you need to have, start having that conversation with your physician. Right. And if you get it, if it, if you catch it early, what is kind of the outcomes? Are, are they, so if you catch how much, it, I mean, you know, what's the difference between catching it earlier or catching it in, in a later stage? I sure. Guess? Yeah. So any cancer, of course, you want to catch as early as possible. Right. right? So now the issue is, is that there is a, the screening is just kind of the first step. After that, you have to confirm right. um, to make sure the cancer is there. If the cancer is there, if you caught it early, the outlook for most patients with prostate cancer is actually very good. Okay. So if you catch it early, um, catch it early enough, we usually be able to take care of it. That being said, even if we don't catch it early, but catch it at a fairly advanced stage, we do have treatments now that can actually have very, still very good outcomes. Okay. So even if you say, hey, I missed that screening or, or I think I'm too old to screen or what have you, you still need to get in yeah. uh, just to make sure that we don't have our good options for you. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, if you are diagnosed with that, kind of what are the different types of treatment plans that, that, that are an option? So a lot of times prostate cancer will kind of involve several different, especially several different, several, several different modalities of treatment that includes surgery sometimes, that includes hormonal therapy. Mm-hmm. It also includes very rarely chemotherapy or some of our new targeted therapy and radiation. So all those are a lot of times, a lot of patients will have all those in, incorporated in their okay. treatment plan. At some point, they're all very effective depending on your type, depending on your stage. 
all have very good toler- tolerability and, and good response rates. And so would that be with, so if you talk to your primary care, you they, they suggested you go get screened. If you got diagnosed and everything, that would be with the oncologist. That would, your treatment plan would go forward with a specialist, I guess, or could it mm-hmm. kind of go back it, and forth? Yeah, it's kind of, so really, really prostate cancer these days, a lot of times involves multiple specialists. Okay. So not just the primary care, urology also is usually for early stage prostate cancer, okay. um, getting in to see them to get their options and our urologists here in our system right, are yeah. very good. So um, very, very good option there. More advanced will involve radiation and also involve medical oncology with us. So okay. it's usually, usually you'll see a combination of, of kind of all of the above for a lot of patients. So it's, it's, it's a pretty multidisciplinary approach that right, we do yeah. in prostate cancer. And, you know, so once you've had your treatment, you know, if you go into remission, kind of what's the outlook after that? So everybody's a little bit individualized. It kind of depends on the stage, depending on, you know, the previous treatment you have. But if we're able to give you, catch it up front and put you into remission, actually with our um, screening uh, test and our, our uh, follow-up imaging that we can do, follow-up uh, labs that we have, we actually usually can catch it before it grows back any significant route. A lot of times we'll do what's called salvage therapy after that. So if it yeah. does grow back, we can always have a good shot of knocking it back down with our treatment. So. Right, right. It's actually, we've come quite a bit, a uh, long way with prostate cancer treatment yeah. these days. So as far as with Kirkland Cancer Center, with the work that you do here, what would you say to people in the West Tennessee health, uh, in the West Tennessee community, if they're thinking that they maybe need to get screened, uh, how can Kirkland Cancer help them? So, yeah, so we always recommend first seeing your primary care. Um, again, our primary cares uh, in West Tennessee, the ones we're affiliated with, they're, they're very good at doing the screening. They understand the guidelines. They're very good at going through the pros and cons. If you are diagnosed and you get to either the urologist or come here, we're, um, our uh, facilities here and also with the urology team that we work with, very accommodating, get you in right away. Um, we certainly are very good at uh, understanding the angst and anxiety with any right. new cancer diagnosis, right? So we, we have our staff here is very good at, at understanding that and it's giving the support needed. I can tell you that where whatever modality of treatment you need, we have really top of the line cutting edge treatment here. Um, so, you know, whether that's radiation, whether that's surgery down with urology or whether that's chemotherapy or targeted therapy with us, We'll make sure that we give you the best treatment that we can that's supported by the data to give you yeah. your best outlook long term. Right. Yeah. And and especially that's something we at West Tennessee Healthcare definitely want to let people know that these options are available right here in West Tennessee. You don't have to go to Memphis. You don't have to go to Nashville to get uh, Absolutely specialized correct. treatment in, in these in these ways. Absolutely correct. All right. Well, um, do you have anything else you want to share that what, that I haven't? Sure. The one thing I would say specifically with the topic of prostate cancer, there's, you know, there's some news articles, there's things on the internet about the PSA check. So one question I always get, even with patients I'm seeing for other conditions, they always ask me about what does the PSA mean? Yeah. Well, the PSA, which is prostate specific antigen, that's, that is a, a test we can run to see if there's any circulating prostate basically prostate cancer cells, what we're really what we're looking for from our end. But more specifically, if it's, if it's elevated, it means you have some prostate tissue mm-hmm. growing in, in a nutshell. Now, any men, as they get older, that PSA can rise. So I want to put that out there because mm-hmm. a lot of patients get a PSA check. They don't know what to do with that number. And it's kind of a low level number. And, and, it's, and most of the time that doesn't mean much. But if you have a history or there's any other risk factors, even a small rise sometimes can mean that you need further workup. So that's, again, that's where it comes back to discussing with your primary care right. about what's, you know, our next steps. If you do have a very high PSA, so that, that warrants more of an urgent referral. So um, I usually tell patients, you know, the first step, I would recommend getting us to one of our, our good urologists here, have them evaluate you. And then based on their workup, we're always welcome to see them here. So you know, first step is always that primary right. care. You have to discuss screening. If the screening is done, depending on that test, we usually have to go through the process of the urologist into us. So that's kind of how, how it goes. So a lot of patients have that question of what, where do I do next with that number? Yeah. And so I know with, with the system having this many different specialties, it's that much easier because it's all in the same system. So people aren't having to right. fax to get that information like it's all. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's easier for the doctors and it's easier for the patients as well. Absolutely. I know something I did want to ask you was within your experience, are there any myths that you find patients saying to you that are maybe wide, widely known myths, maybe that you would want to set the record straight on or anything? <laughs> With 
comes so cancer there's a lot of cancer myths out yeah. there so there's a whole lot of those um we're uh, trying to think of specifically for a prostate yeah so there's always a question of you know how much do drugs affect the PSA there yeah. are some drugs obviously some of the oh, okay, uh, urologic yeah. drugs that medications that are given that can make the PSA go up and down very high number though that's always concerning um you can get fluctuations with some medicines with the PSA level. So I guess that's one thing I hear. You it's know, we, just, we, yeah. there's a, we could spend all day on cancer myths. Yeah. Right? So I was going to say, people are just really afraid <laughs> to, to, I guess, know the information. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's kind of like they were like out of sight, out of mind yeah. type of deal. So I'm glad you mentioned that. I would definitely, so we do get some times where we have a patient that had a PSA checked years ago and they just, for a reason, decided not to follow up yeah. on it. So I, I know it's, it's kind of daunting when somebody says, hey, this could be a cancer marker. But like I uh, reiterated earlier, uh, to reiterate something we mentioned earlier, uh, elevated number doesn't always mean cancer. If Even if it is, we do have good treatments that usually are well tolerated and should be able to take care of this. So it's actually yeah. worse to ignore it than, than to go ahead with, with the workup. Right. And I think that would be a big myth that it would be people thinking finding it would be worse than not finding it because of what all you have to go through. But it's really at this point in history, I mean, med- you know, medicine's only just gotten more and more advanced to where, you know. That's correct. The only kind of other side of that is there, we do have some data saying that, hey, for a patient with a low risk that only has a mildly elevated cancer marker such as PSA, that can lead to tests that lead to not, you know, unnecessary tests, right? right? right. But again, that's why you need that individualized screening discussion, individualized care plan for you, which we do, I think we do a great job. And everybody's, even though cancer is kind of, we consider a lot of times patients have kind of the same disease. Actually, each patient is different. Right, yeah. And the more data we have regarding those treatment plans, regarding the testing, actually is more individualized care today than ever before. Yeah, I think that's the biggest takeaway that I've gotten from from what you've said is that it's not just a big overall dome. Like everyone who gets screened gets the same treatment plan. That's not it at all. That it's really individualized to you specifically as the patient. Absolutely. Um, and that you don't need to be afraid. And you can ask questions. I know a lot of times I, I like to say on here that I maybe some patients feel like people are just telling them what to do and they don't have any say, but absolutely right. you have a say and you can ask questions. And No, we're, uh, I know in our clinic here we're big on autonomy, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I can sit there and give you tons of data. I can throw studies at you. I can throw drugs, drug names at you. <laughs> yeah. But in the end, you know, I always tell my patients, you're one in the hot seat, so you got to be comfortable, right? Yeah. So I'm always guide you. I'm always going to tell you, hey, these, these are your pros and cons of your decision. Yeah. But in the end, you're the one it, that has to go it, through yeah, it. It's the patient so, who makes the decision. So we're, we're very big on that. So, you know, that, that's a, if there's ever a fear, you know, it's, it, you know, we really try to mitigate that as yeah. best we can. Great, yeah. And I know um, everything we've mentioned, you know, the primary care and the urology, especially with Kirkland Cancer Center, I'm going to list the links in the show notes of this podcast so that, well, if people want to look into those deeper, that they can do that from this podcast. Do you have anything else for me? Just, you know, again, just to, you know, as, a, as kind of a parting shot here, just screening is, is huge, right? So yeah. as good as our as good as our advances are in therapy, uh, whether it's surgery, chemo, the immune therapy, radiation, those, those yeah. we, we have advances almost every day in those areas. However, nothing beats finding it early, right? So the, it doesn't right. matter which cancer we're talking about. If you get screened and find it early, your outcomes are better. Yeah, right, and you don't so have to go far. You can stay right, right here. here in West Tennessee. And so, yeah, for, for June, yeah, this we just really want to raise uh, awareness about men's health and getting those screenings done. Absolutely. All right. Well, Dr. Fouché, thank you so much for Absolutely. coming on and giving here. us all this great information. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for listening to We Talk Health. This podcast is not intended to replace any medical advice. Nothing said in this podcast is intended to supersede or supplement the direction of your medical caretakers. If you have any questions or would like to request a topic, you can reach out to us at wetalkhealthpodcast at gmail.com.